people say these billet engines are, are the strongest you can get, but sure one way to test to see how strong they really are, and that's this. All right, if there's anything I don't love more than uh, videos on the internet about cars, it's unboxing videos. So let's have a bit of a look at what you get in the box here from Billet Time. It's obviously well packaged, which is really important, and there it is. So we've got it all packaged really well. You can see that in freight, it's not going to be damaged, which is good. Got our little tool here, which slots in there. It says what it has to be talked up to, which is cool. It tells you how to tighten it, um, which is awesome. And then lift it out. There we go. Right, so yeah, so the common misconception around billet parts is that, uh, that you're just gonna make is bulk more horsepower um, going billet, and it's just not true. The, the reason you're going billet is, is for reliability. So a solid block of, of billet aluminium that's been machined to replicate uh, this part here is going to be significantly stronger than a part that's been cast, and, and this is just cast iron. So um, we'll show you a bit later what we mean by um, the, the extra strength in it, but you can see here that this part is essentially just a replica of, of, of what Mazda made. Um, so this is an FD FD plate, and this this is based on a, a Cosmo. Um, they're, they're very similar, but so you can see um, you know, you've got your intake port here. Um, you've got the same mounting lugs up here, oil port here and here, and for the dowel. Then you've got the threaded holes for all the through bolts all the way around. Two water seal grooves, uh, and also you see here. It'll still accept all the accessories as per this plate. So you can see it's essentially just a, a, a replica yeah. of, of this plate. So, so this could be using a street or race engine. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's got water running through it. So if we look at the front of the plate, um, on, on the factory Mazda one, you'll see that there's only one, two, three, four, five, six bolts here for the front um, front stationary gear. You'll see it has been upgraded on the, on the billet one. So uh, it, it now basically has like another four bolts and that's just so it retains that stationary gear in there bigger when you're making big, big horsepower, which is um, very important for the, for these engines. That's the reason why people do go billet because of that reliability reason. It's not... Hang on, I think I've got Rich Piano calling. Which <laughs> didn't turn his phone off? God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we've got the upgraded stationary gear. You'll see here that the port is bigger on this. Now that's only because this is an FD plate. If this was a factory Cosmo plate, you would see that this would be the same size port. So there's nothing in this plate that- So the is, Cosmo port is slightly larger. It's slightly larger than the FD one, yeah. So there's nothing in this plate that is designed to create horsepower. And just before we go, I see a lot of guys say Cosmos are 20 Bs. They don't understand the Cosmo was produced in a twin rotor as yeah, well. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's was, what this is. More of the uh, more of the two rotors yeah. produced than um, than the than the three rotors for sure. So, uh, so the, the reason so the reason Billet Pro have used the Cosmo one is effectively it was the best designed. Yeah, it's the best plate that Mazda I mean, made. The, the way you make the way you make power is by being able to get more air into the engine, more air and fuel, and yeah. you do that by having the biggest opening yeah. you can essentially. So, so the Cosmo's got the biggest the, opening. So. The port as per standard, so if you want to do a bridge port or whatever, then you know you can you can port that exactly how you would a factory plate. Yeah, that's right. And I mean, and, and also, I mean, you can see here. Um, I don't know how easily you can see it on the plate, but you can see wear marks here. So you can see um, marks here and there, and, and this face wears. So what you have to do if you are um, pulling down an engine to to rebuild it, you would have this plate uh, machined down and then re-nitrite it. So there's costs involved in that as well. Um, with the Villa Pro plate, what you can do is, is this actual, all this steel in here is, is an insert that's removable. So uh, you can use the tool that comes with uh, the plate, insert it in here, undo it, it unlocks, uh, and then that plate uh, can easily be removed. So if you do happen to damage it, because I mean, you, you still could run the risk if, if you do blow up an engine uh, of something um, embedding yeah. in here and scratching the surface. So even yeah, so though you, you are- You can just, um put a new incident. Yeah, so I mean this plate I think retails for about $2,700. Uh, it means you've essentially got a plate for, for life pretty much because the, the, the plate's never going to have a, an issue that these cast iron plates do come across. So all you have to do is just replace that plate if you wanted to replace anything because that's the only real area that's ever going to be damaged on these billet plates. So this is a front plate and you can, yep. you can also buy a rear plate. 
Yep. Yeah. So they're, they're the two common ones for, for cracking because I mean, when you have a look at the, the engine um, and the forces that where, where it's going to twist the most, it's in the front and rear. So traditionally the, the front one and, and where they do crack is around this um, dowel generally. So you, you'll see engines that'll crack on, on this on this front plate and this dowel here. You'll see little cracks here and here. So if, if you've ever got an engine and, and you see oil leaking at the front here or in the rear plate, uh, it'll actually be a dowel on that side and it can crack up there. Um, and if you've, so if you've got a rotary engine you see on the front plate or a rear plate where this top dowel runs through and there's a tiny oil leak, more than likely your engine's had a, an episode of, of detonation. Uh, and, and this is where it cracks. So you can see these ones have got a fair bit of meat, but if you compare it to this, um, you can see just how much thicker it is here. And also the, the, the billet aluminium is, is significantly stronger compared to just um, to cast iron. So they're, they're, they're not going to crack when you have a, a, a detonation. It's not gonna stop your engine from, from blowing up, so to speak, mm -hmm. in terms of um, a, a, a tune-up issue where the, the internal components um, may, you know, if you're running apex seals, they may bow and you'll lose compression. So it's not gonna stop you losing compression, but what it's gonna stop is, um, retail on these plates are about 900 or so dollars Australian. So you can understand why someone might go to this at $2,700 and you think, oh wow, that's three times the cost of this. But if you're, if you're racing a race car that's worth, you know, 100,000 plus dollars, um, you know, $2,700 for this for peace of mind, knowing that that's going to be the only plate you ever buy for your engine, and it's also going to make your engine significantly more reliable, is a lot, uh, is a lot, is a, is a very small cost compared to just buying this, especially when you've got that $100,000 car. Because I mean, if, if you were to, to crack this front plate and oil leaks out and was to leak out onto the racetrack under your tyres, um, you know, I mean, it's, you might just say that and not think it's going to happen, but it could happen. If it does happen, you crash your car just because of that, yeah, trying to exactly. save some money. It's, and um, the boost pressure difference. people are running now, I mean, if you put 50 pounds into each plate, this is going to crack before this one. Oh, 100%. So, I mean... That's the, not a question of... Uh, yeah, so it, it's it's purely a question of reliability. So, I mean, there's, there's people who have um, unbelievably um, fast cars out there, and their tune-ups are spot on, but under the extreme pressures that these um, engines are now under, 50 plus PSI, these these engines are still even cracking yeah. without even know. you know a poor tune up. So yeah. I mean, if you know, what's no difference to like guys in a piston engine? They break a standard yeah. crank. There's nothing wrong with the tune up. It's it's a, a, at the end of the day you're using OE parts. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you can see the guys, especially with like the RB uh, RB series engines. Um, the 2J guys have seem to have a, a much better block than, than than the poor RB guys. But you see uh, RB series engines. Um, they crack the blocks all the time. Um, Windsors, like Ford, uh, the Cleveland and Windsors, I think um, V8, when they, they, they turbocharge those engines, the increased cylinder pressure, they crack yeah. those blocks all yeah. the time. So yeah. there's a reason why these components have been around so long in terms of um, the, the V8 market, even Hondas. I, I think um, a couple of people made billet blocks for Hondas and that at the time. So it was only a matter of time before the rivalry world caught up and, and started uh, making these components to, to counteract the, the issues that most rivalry guys have, which is, you know, just cracking these front and rear plates. Now we haven't weighed these plates, Barumi, but this is considerably lighter. Yeah, I mean, especially with my little Linguini arms, I can, that is bloody heavy, and that's significantly lighter. Like, I can feel that this, oh, geez, if I'd have to guess, I'd say this weighs twice as much as what that does, which, again, I mean, when, you, when you're racing and, you, and you're trying to make weight breaks and, and every little bit counts, then, um, you know, every little bit of weight saving uh, matters because in, in racing circles if you get to put the weight where you want to yeah. to, to meet a weight break in class it can, it can mean quite a lot with your chassis uh -huh. setup. Here's two plates uh, we've got to have an engine that's the reason why people go billet so this is a rear plate and you can see just there you can see a hairline crack um, now that look that may look really really tiny and, and insignificant but that means this plate is now gone it's finished so that's um, you know that that's and it looks like nothing really yeah it looks like nothing but oil will pour out of there and also i mean it'll just get worse and worse so yeah. i mean that's so that's 900 dollars down the drain that one's finished here's a more obvious example of what can happen yeah and he, here's another one so you can see here there's been um is a giant crack through down through here um it's top to bottom that crack yes yeah, so you can see here it's not on the top of the dowel on the on the compression side it's more on what you would call sort of the intake side so yeah. this has probably had um uh, had an intake backfire from a, a really rich misfire um, and you can see here it's um, also it's it's probably had an issue from front to rear rotor where it's tried to um, pull the stationary gear out of the engine almost so you can see here 
where it's cracked on the stationary gear bolts. And again, it's the reason why this billet pro plate has all the extra holes tapped here. So something like this, that if there is um, an event here that causes great stress, it's got extra reinforcement and extra bolts in here to, to keep the stability of that front stationary gear there. So if this, so, so this engine obviously suffered some form of um, issue front to rear rotor, and it was probably uneven loading through um, in, incorrect tune-up stuff. So if this actually, if this engine actually had a billet front plate from Billet Pro in it at the time, this engine would still be fine in the car actually. Um, but because it's just got the cast iron, you can see what's happened here. Right, so we've seen like obviously the cast iron stuff is, is weaker. And um, if you think of this hammer as a really bad tune-up, um, I'll show you just why cast iron is, is much weaker, why the, the strength of the billet is, is, so, is so important. So you can see just how weak, I mean that wasn't even really a hard swing. Um, and that's just snapped right off. Like that's just broken that cast iron like that. So you can imagine if the extreme stress of, of detonation in an engine you know, not only this, this external one get hit by a hammer, but that's what's going to happen to the dow points and things like that in the engine. And, and it's why um, people go, again, why they go upgrade to, to build it. It's, it's full 100% for reliability. Now, the reason why people think it's that billet products make um, power is because once you get reliability out of your engine, you can then start leaning on it. You put more boost into it. You put more nitrous in it. You put more fuel in it. You make more power. But the only reason you're making more power is because the engine's now reliable. So the billet product on its own doesn't make power. It's the reliability that the billet product gives you that, yes. gi that gives you the ability to run exactly. that more power. It's the same as just putting a billet crank in a piston. Engine. Yeah, exactly. Forge, I mean, it's the reason people put forge pistons and, and you know, 4340 forge cranks and, and you know things like that is um, billet intake plenums and, and stuff like that. The, the reason people do it is because these OEM cast parts, well, well, good. Um, they're not great, so that they. Well, they were never designed finish. for this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, they've been designed to make 300 horsepower yeah. in, in factory applications, and to be basically so the manufacturing process was as cheap as possible to get the most reliable uh, outcome as possible. Whereas the billet stuff, designed for racing, cost isn't the issue here. The only issue is reliability, and and stuff like this from Billet Pro um, solves those issues. Yeah, but if you want to know any more information about uh, some of these parts by Billet Pro, now they don't only just make rotary plates, they make a bunch of different stuff, water pumps, engine mount braces, but yep. yeah, check out their website for more information. Yeah, I think the um, twin V-belt uh, front pull and the alternator on Project Redline is actually from Billet Pro, so definitely make some cool stuff. Hey Broomy, yep. can you help me? I had a go at our tuning and I think I've um, had an issue. Yeah, this looks uh, all good. I'll just get the JB weld up and we can um, build up around these areas and um, you should be right to go. Beauty. So yeah, these Billet Pro products are really good. So I'd like to thank the guys at uh, Billet Pro for uh, donating uh, this one to uh, Project Redline. <laughs> Is that right, Luke? Donating? No, I think we're gonna give that one back, pal. Pretty sure that uh, this is mine now, finest keepers. I'll have to ask Charles. <laughs>